Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring a new to me company. This is uh, Sweet November and this is their spring release. Look at these cute little ones like fashion plates. Totally adorable. Um, but there, so there's eight sets in the release. I am using the fairy hair, the spring wheeze and the little moments to build this kind of magical forest scene. Um, what you're going to see me doing here is just some stamping and masking. This is a one layer card. Um, so I had, I stamped and cut out my mask for my little fairy so I could get her placement down um, because I wanted her to kind of be the star of the show with everybody else kind of being supporting actors. Before we get too far along in the video, though, I did want to tell you that this is part of a YouTube hop. Um, so if you would like to participate in that, everything will be linked below for your um, next stop on the hop. And they're giving away the entire release, which is super cool. So you just have to um, subscribe to their channel, like their video from this particular hop, and then um, they will pick a winner by March 22nd. So here with my masking, this tree trunk at the bottom, you saw me put a little piece of masking tape there to kind of cut it in half. It's because I have a different plan for it. I have a different plan than to use it as a tree trunk. Also, this one that I'm stamping here, this is a log, just to be clear. Um, if you guys have been to my channel before, watched my videos, you know I'm a big fan out of kind of like stretching your stamps and getting more out of what you have. So if you look at it horizontally, clearly drawn to be a log. Um, but I stamped it vertically so that way I could kind of use it as like a more interesting kind of like broken down tree in my little magical forest. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of switch up what you have going on in your sets to create a different look or to stretch it a little farther. Um, the trees I stamped, and you can see, especially the one on the right-hand side is stamped much lower. I'm just going to extend that out with a alcohol-safe marker. And then normally when I'm stamping scenes, I tell you guys, whatever you want to see the most of, stamp first. And then I stamped all these little bitty mushrooms last. <laughs> um, that's because I knew that they weren't going to be, uh, need to be masked, that they were going to be stamped in places, um, that you would be able to see all of them. So here's me just finishing off these trees to complete my forest, and then we will move on to the coloring, which honestly is the largest, it's the whole video, really, not the largest portion, it is the video, the coloring is the video. Um, but back to that giveaway, in addition to the YouTube hop, there's also an Instagram hop where they're doing another giveaway if you're interested. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm doing here. I loved, super, super loved this fairy, like kind of like she's like floating in the sky. And so I really wanted her to be kind of like floating on a little, and I could not come up with what I wanted. I was like, is it a hot spring that I want? I kept picturing, here's what I pictured, the scene in Frozen where um, Anna is freezing and Kristoff takes her over to like this little hot spring geyser type thing for her to warm her hands. And I was like, that's what I want. I want her to be floating on this little, like, type thing. Um, but then I could not, for the life of me, find what it was in my Googling. And um, so realistically, I have colored it to look very similar to a geyser, but geyser water actually comes out at, like, boiling. So she must be magic because she <laughs> she can withstand boiling water. Wouldn't recommend this in real life. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, but that is the, the, that was the game plan for this. So what you see me doing now is putting in my sky. I find that because the sky is lighter than the trees, I have an easier time putting that in first and then leaving the negative space to fill in my trees. Um, so that that way I'm not super hard, fast committed to them because at this point they're just white. So if I wanted to adjust the shape or change it, I totally can and it wouldn't be noticeable. So that's why I start that way. And then we're going to move into the ground cover. Um, so I am using a mixture of uh, Olo markers and Copic markers for this. They work really well together. They're both alcohol markers. And the reason that I chose to do that is because I knew that I was going to be coloring a lot of background. And the Olo markers are super juicy because they have that free-flowing ink technology um, and also because mine are brand new. 
So that is why I chose to do the combination of the two. Plus, I have had several people ask me, um, as I've been doing videos with them, if they can use them with their Copics. And yes, you can. Uh, you can totally use them together with no issue. So now um, I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit more yellow-green. I'm going to use that, um, the more traditional green kind of as a base, and then uh, bring in a yellow-green and spread that out, blend that out with my yellow, and then we will be coming back in to do some grasses, um, but I'm going to color my trees first. We are uh, sped up quite a bit at this point. This whole card in real life took me about two and a half hours. Um, several of you guys asked that, like, you know, in real time, how long does this take? And this is a very involved scene. Lots of stamping, masking, and then I colored the whole thing with alcohol markers. Um, plus, this, which I guess is going to be story time for today, um, Sometimes when we in general, <laughs> when we in general um, find ourselves in a situation where we are, whether it's, you know, invited to, the, for me, like this was, I was invited to be part of this um, stamp blog hop. She invited me to be a guest designer. And the owner of this company is Amy Young, who, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know I am a immense fan of, just an absolute huge fan of her. Um, I think she is such a talented artist. And so when she reached out to me and asked me if I would want to use her stamps, I was so flattered. Um, just very kind, very sweet. Uh, and so in addition to being just endlessly talented, she is also a nice person, which like I'm totally here for it. Um, and so when that happens, or maybe it's like a friend um, that you're super close to who maybe asks you to make them something or make them a card, like we want to do our very best. And sometimes that desire to do our very best can be a little bit paralyzing, Um and that's kind of how I found myself when I was sitting down to decide how, like, what kind of card I was going to make. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. So now with the trees, I'm going in, I'm coloring them all with the same browns. However, I am not using all of the browns for every tree. So this log like this broken down tree that is stamped in the front is, um, I apologize, I had to refill my marker. That's what that break was. <laughs> um, is obviously has a ton more detail and it should because it's the first thing we see. It's super up close and it's right in our face. So lots of detail. Then the next layer of trees or the ones that have the black outline, again, these are going to have more detail because they're larger and they are closer to us in the scene. The ones that we've sketched into the sky background here to kind of fill in our forest, those are going to have less detail. So I am really just adding um, a little bit of shading with one of the mid-tones, just kind of like some little triangles of color and some color on the left and right hand side of the tree. But for the one that's furthest in the back, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to add the lines on either side. And so those are three color blends for those ones. For the ones that are up front and will require more detail, I will use the full four color blend, um, so including the darkest color. And then that way it creates this depth perception um, that the lightest, least detailed tree is furthest from us and the darkest, most detailed tree is closest to us. Uh, because when you're doing scene cards, you know, that perception is something that you do want to pay attention to. And so that's how I chose to color my trees. Um, we'll come back to story time, but I just want to say, uh, for those of you who are my regular followers, I totally caught Caitlin's cold. She got me. She got me good. I, I mean, you, I think when you have young babies, um, you know, my toddler is barely a toddler. Uh, she's just out of the, the infant stage. Um, and so they're just always, they're in your face. You got all, you know, you're holding them and loving on them and all that stuff. And they're just right in there, coughing, sneezing, snotting, the whole deal. And so uh, she 110% got me. She got me. It happens. Um, 
Fortunately, my immune system is a little bit more uh, well prepared for the common cold than Miss Caitlin's is. She still is not sleeping through every night. She is still very restless. Um, I just have some congestion and a little bit of a sore throat, but certainly not enough that I'm like laid out on the couch. Um, I'm still able to, you know, function for the most part and just kind of work through it. Uh, though my husband did take night shift duty last night so that I could sleep through the night in the hopes of, you know, being able to kick this a little sooner than later. That would be fantastic. Also, Dayquil's helping me out, you know, you know how it do. Um, Okay, so now uh, going in with the lightest color, just filling everything in, and then the trees are done. From here, I'm going to go in and put in my grasses. I have bunches and bunches of videos about how I do my grasses, but the gist of it is that you want to do a flicking motion upwards, um, and the they don't have to be all the same length. They don't have to be all the same size. In fact, you probably don't want them to be. It's going to help them look more natural. And I put the darkest ones where my items were um, to kind of ground them and then moved out to my lightest colors. After this, you're going to see, I since I wanted this to be like a geyser, I'm going to go in with a zero marker and I'm just kind of going to draw myself a little steam um, by using the zero marker to blend and smudge out the color. When I'm doing this, I am moving the pigment around and that is going to cause it to move into the other items. So basically what I'm telling you is all of the coloring is going to be a hot mess. There's going to be blue in her hair. There's going to be browns in her hair. There's going to be greens in my mushrooms. Don't sweat it. Like, don't don't sweat it. We'll be able to fix it for the most part. We're not talking about like blacks or reds. Um, so we, we will be able to move that and you're by the end of the card, you're not even going to notice that those colors ended up where they weren't supposed to be. Uh, for the moss on the side of the broken down tree, um, I colored them with the same yellow greens, but then I went in with that um, green uh, Olo marker. What It's a 1.4. Um, and I just glazed over top of it just to give it a little bit of a darker hue. And here is where I'm starting the smoke process or the steam process. And um, I have another way that we're kind of going to make that pop a little bit later on. So anyway, so Amy invited me to be a part of the blog hop. Super flattered. Was I was just like, I really, really want to use her stamps in a way that's really going to showcase them well. And because of that... I almost started like overthinking it. Like clearly she asked me because she thought that I would do well with her style of stamps. And I'm going to be honest, I don't disagree with her. I'm a big fan of this style of stamps, especially the hair. There's not enough good hair out there in the stamp world, um, which is why I chose this, this fairy. Like <laughs> I was like, yes, girl, look at that beautiful hair. Um, and so... But I just, I was my own worst enemy because I was like, oh, I could do this or I could do that and I could do this. And all of this um, indecision was created by me just wanting to do my very best. And it was creating so much anxiety within me that I just couldn't make a move. Like I just couldn't commit to something. And so... Um, I just want to share with you, like, if that happens to you, you're you're not the only one. It happens to a lot of us, um, especially when there's maybe a lot of options. It can seem really overwhelming. Uh, but my, I guess, my recommendation or what works for me would be to whatever was the first idea, go with that. Because that's what you were initially drawn to. And so for me, when I was looking at all of the stamps and all of the different, you know, ways I could possibly use them, um, the one that I was drawn to first was the fairy because I loved her hair so much. Um, and then, so once I committed to her, in my mind, I saw her, you know, kind of like floating. And then that's how we got to the geyser. I did have to do some Googling for that, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Um that's how we got there. And then, you know, where does that make sense? Where does a fairy, you know, make sense at? Well, she makes sense in the forest. And then everything else just kind of came 
after that. Um, here, what you see me doing is using just a very light warm gray to kind of fill in that steam area. Um, and then I'm going to go in and start uh, coloring some of her accessories. So her top is made out of leaves. So that was a pretty simple decision to color that green. And then I'm just getting the greenery of the flowers in her hair. I decided to make her blue, um, make her little petal skirt blue along with the flowers in her hair. One, because it's already represented in the card. So if you watch my channel, you know, heard me have talked about like continuity in your card. Um, I know I already have a lot going on here. So keeping my color scheme simple is going to make my card more cohesive which is ultimately the goal. You don't want your recipient to look at your card and be like, oh my gosh, this is so busy. There's a whole lot of whole lot of stuff going on here and it's too much. You, you want it to work well together. Here, I did slow down the coloring so that I could color her skin tone. Um, so this is not as sped up as what we've been seeing. And that's just because I know that it can be very challenging to... Um, color faces and bodies and then I will also slow it down for the hair portion as well when we get there so adding shadows now all of her hair is coming up off of her face but where her face is rounded you would still have shadows on the edges um and then underneath her nose, underneath her lip, there's a line drawn, but there's also a line drawn on the top of her nose. So I did add a little bit of shadow there, and then I just extended those lines up to give her face just a little bit more shape. Um, and then as I work out to my lightest color, I will just be going over those um, lines that I've already put down for her face, after I did the, um, went all the way out to my lightest color, I did feel like the contouring, if you will, I don't, is that, I mean, that's a thing in makeup, but I don't do it. <laughs> that's a lot of effort. A girlfriend, I ain't got that much time. Um, but it felt like it was just a little bit too dark, so I did go back in, um, and kind of lighten it up a little bit so she had more of a highlight on, um, the, top of her nose, not just the tip. Um, so I went back in, this is the uh, E11, and just kind of filled that back in, um, back around her little cheeks, and then, um, oh, I guess I did, I guess I did her whole body. Hmm, who knew? Not me. Nope. And I just did this yesterday, so you think I would have remembered that. Mom brain. It happens. Um, so, then I gave her a little pink chink with an R20. You can use whatever pink works for you. I've always used R20 and been happy with it. Um, and then in order to give her eyes a little bit of color, I didn't want to completely get rid of the whites of her eyes, but I did want her eyes to be a color. So I just went in with little like half moons of blue so that everything was matchy matchy. For the mushrooms, I am coloring them um, a cool gray. I did the geyser a warm gray, so I'm doing the mushrooms a cool gray, um, and when you're coloring something white, you just want to add in the shadows. These are pretty heavily shadowed. Um, you can still see some white on there, and then I also used uh, the grays to add just a little bit of shadow to her wing to make the mushrooms to bring in some more color and to make them a little bit more interesting. I did go in with um, some reds for, I colored the um, the more detailed mushrooms all red, and then I added some spots to the white mushrooms, including the ones that were growing up the side here. So everything, again, is super matchy-matchy. And then I will use those um, one of those reds is the base for my oranges for my butterflies, again, to make everything cohesive. Let's talk about this hair. So one of the easiest ways, this is not going to give you strands, but it will give you dimension. One of the easiest ways to color hair is to start with your darkest marker and go over the lines that are drawn for you. So the illustrator, in this case it's Amy, has drawn lines that are meant to be the sections of hair. So go in, darkest color, just outline right over those lines. You don't have to do anything else but that. Just, just follow the lines. Now you will notice up at the top where her hair is kind of folding over on itself. 
I didn't take the line all the way around the outside edge. I just kind of stopped it part of the way through. Um, and that's because I, I don't want to make it all super dark. This is supposed to be the dimension portion. So I just followed the lines, not the outside outline, the lines that are within the image. And then I will move on to my next color. When I'm doing my next color, I am going over the darkest color and then extending it out just a little bit on either side of the line. So this will be just a little bit wider than what we already have down there. It will be directly on top of it. So you should have a little bit of this color on the left and right hand side of your darkest color. If you don't, that's fine. Just go back in there um, and put it down on the other side. The only time that we will not put it on both the left and right hand side is that part right there where it swoops up, where it's curving around. We want that to be the lightest. So we're only going to add darkness to the top of it, right underneath that little teeny tiny flower. And then we're going to do the same thing with the next color. So you can see we're starting to fill in these areas of hair um, with the colors that we have, but each time we're going over the previous color and that is going to help the blending quite a bit. And this will give us really, really good dimension and section off each portion of the hair. Um, and again, here with this top piece, I'm not I'm not adding it to the left and right. I'm just adding it to the right or what looks like the top to us. Um, so that way that the lightest portion is going to be right up against it. And then with the lightest color, we will just fill in everything that is left over. So any areas that's left over, we're just going to fill that in. Again, overlapping that color over the previous color. And it's a really easy way to get... Um, shadows and highlights without having to put in a ton of effort or learning a ton of technique. So now you can see her hair is quite dimensional. In order to get the strand look, you do need to do some flicking, and I'm going to do that now. So I wanted to show you one way and then another. So you can do the flicking to begin with. You don't have to do the base layer. You totally can if you want to. Um, if you do the flicking the like you start with the flicking um, which basically just means you want to you know flick your color again we don't want them to be the si same size shape all of that you don't want to create a wall of color you want there to be some variation but you're just going to go um kind of from the darkest areas so around her forehead and then where it's curving in on itself you want to add um, some flicks from there and I'm just going to work out again to my lightest color. I know it seems silly to go over it with your lightest color again because we already have so much color down but because alcohol markers are transparent going over it with the lightest color will remove some color from the darker colors and actually give us more variation. So what I was going to say is if you start with the flicking, you can also leave some white in there for some really strong highlights. In this case, because we started with the base color, we will have no white um, left over. Though you could go back in and put it in with a gel pen or go back in with a uh, colorless blender and remove it. But I didn't feel like it was necessary. I was happy with her hair. So, okay, anyway. So my recommendation would be go with your very first idea because that is what you were gravitating towards in the first place. That's what kind of grabbed your attention. And typically, that is going to be your best chance to showcase your abilities to the best of your ability, because you were already, like, sparked by it creatively. Um, and so, like I said, that is that is what I did. And ultimately, I was I was happy with the way that the card came out and I was able to actually move forward and get something on paper. Sometimes when we're busy overthinking things, we, you know, get that fear of the blank page. Um, and if that was the case, then I would have committed to something that I never would have produced a card for and then I would really felt terrible. Uh, but I was able to move past that. So I hope that that helps you um, in your kind of card making, whether, you know, you be guest designing for somebody or making an extra special card for someone that you just really want it to be something super special. Um, 
So now all my butterflies are colored and we're going to go in um, just to add a little bit of color to her wings. Um, I'm doing more blue greens at the base and then I will do a little bit of green on the edges and that's because her wing should be transparent so you should be able to see some of the green behind it. I just chose a much lighter green um, so that it wasn't you know, super dark. Now that all the coloring is done, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some white highlights. This just kind of adds to the fun and the whimsy of the scene. Um, so I'm adding some highlights to my mushrooms. Um, and then I'm also going to use this to kind of outline my steam um, with some little like curls and scrolls and, and things like that. So it's more readily a parent. Um, I also used it to, she has like this little uh, fairy wand in her hand. So I just added some more dots and uh, stars to make that look kind of more sparkly um, in the whites of her eyes. I did that as well. So for the um, steam portion, I wasn't like I didn't put down a lot of pressure. I let it skip where it wanted to skip. I just wanted it to really kind of be barely there um, because I have, again, I have another way to kind of uh, sh showcase that it's it's there, the steam is there, um, that she's kind of floating on. But I just did some little curls and scrolls and things like that. You don't, you don't have to be necessarily married to, um, you know, this thick white line. I am using a 10 um, in the jelly roll. That's one of my go-to sizes. I typically use a 10 or an 8, and I used a 10 for this one. Um, and again, just doing some little curls and things off of that steam um, to give it just a little bit more shape. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's We're just giving the illusion of the steam. Here's how we're going to kind of bring it to life even more. This is a Zig... Um, I was going to say clean color marker, but it's not. It's a Zig glitter marker, and this is the white, which means when you put it down, it goes on clear, but as it dries, it becomes more opaque, and it looks white. So that's how I'm really going to bring the steam to the forefront. I'm also going to use it to add my little, um, like water buildup, salt buildup, I don't know what that is on a geyser, uh, around the edge, and then I will outline that with the white gel pen, um, and it's really just kind of going to bring it up a notch and make sure it doesn't look like a tree trunk, that it definitely looks more like a geyser. So after that, I just stamped a sentiment on there and heat embossed it in white, and then that's the whole card. So I hope you will head over uh, to the next hop along the stop. I hope that you enjoyed the video and you learned a little something. And uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I know it's a long video. Thank you so much if you made it this far. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.